Hello guys and welcome to another body Stenics tutorial. In today's whiteboard tutorial, we're going to touch on how to program your own calisthenics skill training week. Let's go. If you're new to our channel, be sure to start off by subscribing and hitting the bell icon for notifications so that way you don't miss any future videos just like this one. In order to put skill training into perspective for you guys, today we're going to touch on seven main factors that contribute to how successful you are with your skills training particularly when it comes to programming your month and particularly your weeks. And the seven key areas which we're gonna to touch on are the following. The first is the season. The second is the frequency. The third is the skill of focus. Fourth are the reps. Fifth, the rehab. Sixth, the cardio. And seventh, your core training. Let's begin with the season. When we refer to the season, we're purely focusing on which part of the year you're training. This includes weather conditions, whether you're training inside at your house, or whether you're training outside in the park, or even inside a gym. Because all of these factors which we just mentioned influence your performance as an athlete, as your surroundings determine the amount of focus which you are gonna have in your training session. When it comes to training outside, whether it's at a park, or whether you're simply just training on parallels in an empty space around you, nature is a great choice to go if you have good weather conditions where it's sunny and it's not too hot. However, if you live in a country in a world where it's either too cold or maybe too hot or too humid, then training at home or training in a gym is a much more viable option for you. Now let's speak about whether you should be training with other people around you or whether you should actually hone in and train on your own purely by yourself with no training partner or no other person around in your surroundings. I wanna give you my situation as a calisthenics athlete and how I managed to create most of my progress in the sport. Most of my personal progress took place beginning inside a gym. I used to go to a bodybuilding gym and use the bar facilities and work purely on reps and getting strong in the basics, muscle ups, handstand holds, and handstand push-ups. However, I quickly came to the realization that if you really wanna focus on achieving skills, that training inside a gym with a lot of people, with a lot of noise and a lot of distractions, wasn't the way to go for me personally. I realized that after the one and a half years to two year experience in the sport, that I really needed to be on my own to focus more on how I engage my muscles during my skills and how I approach training overall. Focus is a key component when it comes to achieving skills in calisthenics, especially when referring to skills in the difficulty level of planche and front lever. So as time progressed into my third and fourth year in calisthenics, I bought myself a pair of parallels and started training in the comfort of my own home. Now, obviously being inside a house and not having access to a pull-up bar made it difficult to work on my pull elements. So I then went on to buy some taller equalizers where I could work front lever. Then I would actually go to a park or to a gym to work on my pool skills where I had access to a taller bar. But reality is that you need to make some type of sacrifice in order to achieve a certain skill. If planche is your main goal, then you must focus and hone in on the planche and the planche alone. So in summary, find out what type of workout conditions suit you best, and that will be the determining factor as to whether you train outside in the park, inside in the gym, or at the comfort of your own home. The second component that determines the success of your skill training is the frequency in which you train. If you are not training at least five times a week calisthenics full time, then the likelihood of you achieving a skill such as planche or front lever is really low. Whilst at the same time, we at Bodysthenics never recommend any of our athletes to train more than five times a week. Putting yourself on overdrive and training six to seven times a week is simply gonna lead you to fatigue and overall burnout. This will make us stagnant in our skill progress Seen as though the prerogative and goal with training skills is to train as often as possible. So it's always best to do two to three times on, one day off, another two to three times on, and another one day off. So that way you give your muscles and tendons adequate time to recover, so that way you're able to keep your frequency of training to its optimum high. So the question remains, are you able to train front lever or planche every day? Yes, you most definitely can. The problem isn't training planche or front lever every day. The problem is how well you recover. Are you stretching adequately enough? Is your recovery to a point where you are able to sustain training three, five days a week repetitively and performing the same movements? These are all questions which you must answer in correspondence to your own training system. So to sum up frequency, we recommend that if skills are your goals, particularly the planche and the front lever, which are high in difficulty, you must be training at least four to five days a week, no less and no more. The third category is the skill. 
the skill which you have selected. If planche and front lever or any other type of high level difficulty skill is your personal goal, then these skills require more focus meaning that you'll have less time to work on other things. However, if you are an intermediate athlete or even a beginner athlete, then working on skills with less difficulty, such as the handstand hold, achieving the dragonfly, or even a handstand push-up, or let's say even a muscle-up, then these skills involve more of a variety in order to achieve, meaning that your training session will be broken down into more variety of exercises. The fourth category which determines your achievement in skills are your reps. You should be performing reps, no doubt, in every single training session. However, you should never begin your training session with reps. Rep training is a great way of conditioning yourself in order to prepare your body to withstand the force that is placed on it during skills. Performing reps before you begin your skill training is pre-exhausting your body, meaning that you're just simply going to be too tired to perform optimally during your skills. Performing static holds always must be your first priority if skills are your focus meaning that you should be as fresh as possible going into your static hold training. So to sum up reps, always perform your reps at the end and ensure that your range of reps is always high, meaning that the difficulty of the exercise is low and the intensity is not too high also. So the 12 to 15 rep range is adequate enough to keep you conditioned and ready for skill training. The fifth category is rehab. Rehab is one of the most underrated and less spoken about subject when it comes to how important it is in your skill achievement. Your ability to recover fast will ultimately determine the frequency of your training. So this is how important rehab truly is to a calisthenics athlete. Seen as though we are required to train as often as possible in order to achieve these high difficulty skills, we must also have the capacity and ability to recover fast. You should be performing active rehab at the end of every training session for at least one third of the time that you actually train for. So for example, if you train for three hours, you must spend an extra hour rehabbing at the end of your three hour training. Alternatively, if you train for one hour, you must also dedicate a third of that time, which is 20 minutes at the end of your session, rehabbing and stretching your body. So to sum up rehab, always rehab at the end of each training and also rehab for a whole hour minimum on your rest days. Now the sixth category is cardio. Although cardio is not our primary focus when it comes it's to vital calisthenics, when it comes to keeping you in a conditioned physical state in order to be able to train as frequent as possible. By being able to maintain adequate cardiovascular fitness is vital in your ability to train more efficiently. By increasing your lung capacity enables you to breathe more efficiently, which ultimately means that you are not gonna be getting as fatigued as quickly during your skill training. Cardio can be performed on your rest days before your rehab and can also be performed in shorter intervals after your training immediately. By performing cardio such as light jogs or even rowing machine is also an ultimate form of recovery as you promote blood flow throughout your entire body, particularly after your skill training. So to sum up cardio, we recommend that you do some type of cardio at the end of your training for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Also use cardio for 10 minutes in the beginning as a great warm up to promote blood flow. And in addition, do more prolonged cardio, meaning rowing for longer or running a longer distance on your rest days before your rehab. Now let's speak about the seventh and final category which determines your ability to achieve skills and that is your core training. Core training is the alpha and omega of your calisthenic skill abilities. Being able to stabilize your core and engage your hips is vital in being able to achieve that perfect form which we're looking for in our skills. So if you're an athlete of a level who has not yet achieved a full body dragonfly, then that must be your priority in your training. However, if you're one of the more stronger athletes and more athletically capable and the dragonfly is easy, then you must use this exercise at the end of your skill training in a form of reps and sets so that way you further increase your core endurance. And when it comes to core training, it's vital that we perform variety, meaning that we also mimic static holds, which is transferable strength, which we can take into our levers and into our planches. And we must also perform rep-based core exercises, such as dragonflies and leg raises. So to sum up the core section, we encourage every athlete to work on core as a separate component of each training session. And you can also add in a core session during your rehab days, however, with a low intensity. Now having spoken about all the seven categories which are vital to have intact when it comes to skill training and calisthenics, now let's use the whiteboard to see how we're gonna exactly structure our training week. To the far side of the whiteboard, we have a key or also known as a legend. 
meaning that every time we write F in our schedule, this will mean front lever. Every time we write P, it will mean planche. And every time we write R or C, we're going to be referring to the reps or the cardio. So let's use the front lever and the planche as skill goals for this example here on the whiteboard. Seen as though the planche and the front lever are the anatomically opposite skills to each other, we can definitely use them and train them together simultaneously. So let's begin with Monday. Monday, you are able to train your first training session beginning with front lever. Tuesday, you can train planche. And Wednesday, we're going to use this day to rehab. Thursday, we're gonna get back into it with front lever training. Friday, we're gonna also repeat our planche training. Saturday is that third optional day which we can give ourselves to either train again or utilize it for core and rehab once again. But let's assume this athlete is determined and keen to train. We're gonna use this for a mixed front lever and planche session simultaneously, working on both skills, however, lowering the intensity and the amount of sets and reps. And once again, to end the week, Sunday will be a rehab day. So this here can be week one whereby you have already structured your adequate recovery as well as your skills. Now in the second week, we can up the ante a little bit. What do I mean by this? So in week two, we're gonna begin the week this time with front lever once again, but we're gonna add rep session in the end. Then on Tuesday, we're going to begin the day with planche and we're also gonna add planche based reps in the end. Wednesday once again will be a rest day with active cardio. We're moving on to Thursday. What we can do is switch planche and front lever. So that way we shock our muscles. So once again, we're gonna work on planche and reps in the end. And here we're gonna work on front lever with reps based around the front lever in the end. Now what we're gonna do on Saturdays, we're gonna have a core day. Core is gonna be combined with active recovery right after we finish our core. Sunday is once again an off day. However, keep in mind that core is also going to be performed at the end of each of these training sessions. With the only difference being that on the Wednesday or the Saturday, we can slip in an extra core session where we hone in on core exercises only. Now let's say in week three, you wanna up the ante once again and you wanna increase the amount of time that you train. So in week three, we're gonna draw one more line here. This last category is going to be week three. We're gonna once again begin the week with front lever and planche. We're gonna also perform our reps as to never neglect our basic conditioning for the skills. Then on Wednesday, we're gonna throw in active cardio as well as core. So now we're gonna increase the intensity by doing cardio and core midweek simultaneously. Then on Thursday, we're gonna continue with our mighty training week with planche and our reps, and here with front lever and our reps also. Saturday is optional, but seen as though we've upped the ante in the third week, and we're going for that full on intensity as much as we can handle and providing that we're recovering adequately enough, we're gonna go for a core and a cardio session. So having that double core and cardio is really important in terms of increasing your intensity throughout your training weeks. Once again on Sunday, we have a break. Break meaning that you go away from training, you don't do any type of training other than a light walk. So by having this basic training skill structure in mind, what you can do over the next three weeks is reassess how your body is pulling up, how your performance is going, and how well you're progressing throughout the training weeks. And in the next three gaps, feel free to create your own training session. Feel free to create your own training session and your own training week based upon all those factors which we just mentioned. We hope you found value in this tutorial where we analytically spoke about how you can structure your own training months and weeks in order to achieve calisthenic skills. This is the blueprint which we use for our online global family of athletes who are training on a daily basis through our online coaching portal. We take all these factors and apply them to you directly in order to better assess your performance and create the ideal training structure for you as a calisthenics athlete in accordance to your own level. So in saying all this, if having a coach to monitor all these factors in for you and all you had to do was the work, would you consider joining our powerful online coaching platform? If so, the link is down in the description, fill in the questionnaire and hope to see you soon on the global body Scenics family of athletes. See you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching today's tutorial, guys. If you guys found value, then be sure to subscribe and also hit that bell icon for notifications. We upload a new tutorial every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. European Easter Summer Time. 
For those athletes who want a more in-depth approach to their calisthenics progress, be sure to get your own copy of the 100 Calisthenics Secrets book. And for an even more depth analysis on how you can progress as an all-round calisthenics athlete, be sure to get access to our exclusive Ultimate Calisthenics course. And for those athletes who want to join the Body Stenics global family of athletes who are taking their skills and strength to the next level, be sure to apply for online coaching today in order to fast track your progress and achieve elite calisthenics status. I'm George, Body Stenics coach. See you guys in the next video.